calling me from an old rugged tree and it whispers draw closer to me Amen Leave this world far behind There are new heights to climb And a new place in me you will find That what you want? Hallelujah! Whatever it takes to draw closer I'll be willing to That's right. Come on, everybody. Let's get our mind on the Lord. Whatever oh, it takes to be more like you. Lord, that's what I'll be willing to do. I'll trade sunshine for rain.
Jesus, let there be peace in the house of God tonight, Lord. Let there be hope in the house of God tonight, Lord. Let there be revival in the house of God tonight. Let there be victory in the house of God tonight. Oh, let there be unspeakable joy in the house of God tonight. Let your people be blessed in a mighty way, Lord. Let us go home different than the way we came to the house of God. It's all that, folks. It's just surrendering to the Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Turn around and shake hands with your neighbor. Say, I came to get it tonight. I'm not leaving without it tonight. I'm determined to get what the Lord has for me. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's sing unto the Lord, everybody. In Jesus' name.
for the usher to come at this time. And I'd like for everyone to realize what a blessing we have been experiencing the last three nights, three services, Sunday morning, Monday night, Tuesday night, and now this is just Wednesday night. Our last service with Brother Johnson. He's got other obligations. But we're so glad thankful for the good messages that we've been hearing and the the way he ministers to people I have been so amazed at how he has helped us folks brother Johnson has helped us he has blessed us he sacrificed to leave his family behind to go answer the call of God I certainly don't want him worrying about any bills, any financial obligations. Amen. And I have prayed and earnestly sought the Lord about how much we should give this man. And I'm asking you to help me tonight because a lot of people are out tonight and we're missing some folks. But I'd like for everybody that could to at least put $20 in the offering pan, $50. Every family could give a good love offering tonight. Amen. Amen. Brother Marion, would you pray over this offering? God bless you as you bring your love offering right now in Jesus' name. Johnson, come and 
bless us tonight with the word of the Lord, whatever he feels from the Lord. Everybody say, God bless Brother Johnson. Clap our hands to the Lord, everybody. Ah, you can do it better. I've heard you. Do it with your voice and your hands clapping unto the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're good to us. God's good to us. I, I've enjoyed my little time here with you guys. I hope I've somehow been able to bless you a little bit and uh, uh, you guys are so good you don't know I might come back sometime you never know I might come back I mean I got my name on the wall of this church what can you say about that I mean I mean you you can say he did some off the wall preaching it's right there say, that's off the wall on the wall off the wall yeah, yeah we're gonna put a wall up that the devil can't cross I'm going to tell you that and uh, I give honor to uh, Brother Khan Sister Khan, don't you love these people aren't they just sweet doing the work of God in Topeka Kansas yes I read about, studied about Topeka uh, many times I'm glad to be here and be able to meet you sweet people uh, God wants to do something tonight. Do you believe that? Amen. God really does. And God's got certain ways that he works that are uh, way beyond our understanding. But God works through certain avenues. I'm going to talk about them tonight. And uh, how many of you know God works through obedience? God works through obedience. God will work through an obedient person. I mean, you know with your own kids, if a kid act right, they get a lot more from you. Kids show their self. They get spankings at my house, you did. My mama didn't say, I'll pull the car over and come back. She just reached back and got it. And uh, uh, I, I feel like tonight God wants to do something. I want to see, I want to see how, uh, how much you remember from what God started on Sunday about us coming together in unity. I want to see how much you remember about that. This might be hard on you. This might be hard on you, but you can do this. You can do this. I want you, if you want everything God's got for you tonight, and you guys can't do it because you're already here, but I want everybody to move up as close as you can to the front of this church right now. Just move. Take your purse. Take your Bible. Take your boyfriend. Take your girlfriend. Take your mother-in-law. Whatever you got, just come moving this way. If you're on the second, come to the first. If you only, only farther they can go is to the altar. They already made it. But I want you to move. Just, just trust me on something. I want you to come in. Pack in right through here. Pack in right through here. Come, come this way. Somebody come right. If you want a blessing, come get as close as you can up on the front. I'm just going to tell you. Just get up as close as you can. Somebody, yeah, right here in the front. Move right there. If the, the more you need a God, the closer you get to God. I'm not saying he can't get you on the back. I'm just saying God is going to build a fire and you can't build a fire when all the wood's scattered. We're going, we're going to bring it together for a moment. Amen. Now that you're in that new place, now you can remain seated, but now clap your hands right there. Give God a mighty praise right where you're sitting now. You hear how much better that sounds? You hear that? The coming together. Tell your neighbor, say, you can't do it by yourself. Say, you're not going to do it without me. Because I'm on your side and I love you and nothing you can do about it. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to, if you want to, you don't have to. But if you'd like to, I do have a couple of my books tonight. Prophetic Warfare. That is my first book on intercessory prayer. This book is about the end time, about the battle with uh, angels, fallen angels, and God's holy angels, Mark of the Beast, Antichrist. Uh, those books are 20 bucks, but if you don't have 20 bucks, if you'll see me, uh, it's not about making money. It's about making disciples, so I'll take what you got, and uh, I'd like for you to pick up a couple of those tonight. Can I take you to the word of the Lord, and can I tell you what the Lord visited with me about today, what he wants to show you tonight? over in the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 8 
uh, Matthew chapter number 8 and 1 Samuel chapter number 10 and uh, Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to show you a prophetic principle. Tell your neighbor, say a prophetic principle. A prophetic principle. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Isn't that amazing? This leper comes and the first thing he does is he doesn't tell the Lord how bad his situation is. The first thing he does is he does what? He comes worshiping. And said unto him, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. Tell your neighbor, say, he never asked him to do it. He told him he could do it. Pretty powerful, isn't it? He, he come worship the Lord before he ever asked for anything. He, he put the, the cart in front of the horse, you would think, but he starts worshiping before he ever asked the Lord to do anything. In 1 Samuel chapter number 10 and verse number 5, it says, After that, you'll come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines, and it shall come to pass that when you are come thither to the city, that you shall meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a psaltery and a tabret and a pipe and a harp before them and they shall prophesy tell your neighbor say they shall prophesy they shall prophesy and the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you shall prophesy with them and thou shall be turned into another man I'm going to speak something prophetically right now if you do this tonight thou shall be turned into another church I'm going to talk to you tonight. I know you're tired. You've been working. You've, been, you've left stuff undone to get here all week. It's going to be hard for you to be a sacrifice to put a praise on tonight. But I want to tell you, whenever you know how to praise God like I'm going to show you here, your praise becomes your prophecy. So I want you just to lift up your hands to the Lord right now and let the Lord know, Jesus, you're worthy to be praised. Whether I feel like it or I don't feel like it, you're worthy, Lord Jesus, to be adored. We love you, God. We magnify you. Let the power of the Lord be upon us. Spirit of the Lord be upon us. Let the gifts of the Spirit operate. Let our ears be open. Let our tongue speak as the oracle of God. Our ears hear it. Be glorified in all that I would say and do. Let the gift of teaching take place tonight. We love you, Jesus. If you love him, just clap your hands to the Lord and magnify him for a moment. Just shout his name about three times before you sit down. Just say that name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now just look at somebody on your way down and tell them, say, your praise is your prophecy. You can be seated. Thank y'all for standing. Y'all such sweet people. I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about at least three rims of the prophetic anointing and, and uh, just to lay a little bit of a, of a framework for where I feel like we need to go. But I may do a little bit of teaching tonight. Would that be all right? And, 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 and whenever, uh, whenever the Holy Ghost shows you something and you begin to dig into something, uh, nobody has to holler at you to make it plain. Uh, you're just going to get a light bulb turned on tonight, all right? Elbow your neighbor and say, if you get this, it will change you. Tell them, say, if you get this, it's going to change you. Now, now there are at least three spokes on the prophetic hub, and, and, and we don't have to debate about it, how, how you want to feel about it, but for the most part, there are three major spokes on the prophetic wheel, and they are this. They are the office of the prophet, they are the gift of prophecy, and they are the spirit of prophecy. If I told you about the gift of prophecy, I would really be telling you something, believe it or not, that anybody who receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost has access to all nine gifts of the Spirit. Now, if you don't believe it, and, and then, then we can't help you because you're only going to operate in the gifts of the Spirit according to your level of faith. 
But whenever you talk about the gift of prophecy, you are talking about something that the Holy Ghost has already uh, put in you that you have the ability to tap into this. And the gift of prophecy is basically this. It is you speaking edification and comfort and exhortation. Prophecy or even tongues interpretation are not made to rebuke people. They're, they're not, they're not to, to, I've heard people try to give tongue interpretation and get on the pastor or somebody. Uh, it's never your job or my job or any saint's job to try to take the law in their own hands and start trying to correct people who they're supposed to be submitted to. Correction never goes this way. It always works this way. And, and I, I tell people this, I said, if you think somebody's doing you wrong that's in leadership, what you need to do is pray for them. And if, you, if you're right and they're wrong, God's gonna raise you up and he'll put them down, but it's not your job. But now, listen to me. Salvation is a free gift. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, they were not collecting money at baptismal service last night. He did not say it'll be $25 to baptize you in Jesus' name. And oh, there's a tax. No, the Holy Ghost, salvation, all is free. But look at me, folks. The operation of the gifts of the Spirit will cost you something. I'm going to take that a little bit further and tell you that the anointing is very expensive. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, uh, revival is very expensive. And so the reason that a lot of people get saved but they never operate, and I'm just dealing with the gift of prophecy here for a moment, and you'll see why. Uh, the reason that people never get to the gift of prophecy is not because it's not available, it's because they do not pay the price. You can't buy salvation and you cannot technically buy the gift of prophecy except that it is an exchange that comes through prayer and fasting and dedication. But I'm gonna tell you, if you desire the gifts of the Spirit, they're available to everybody in this church with the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost and you'll spend your time before God, God will open up the rim of the prophetic to you. Outside of the gift of prophecy, there's the office of a prophet. That's an entirely different thing just because somebody has prophesied does not make them a prophet uh, because anybody can have the gift of prophecy but to be a prophet or to be any of the fivefold ministry apostles and prophets evangelists pastors and teachers you can fast and pray until your head falls off if it's not in the cards of God for you to be in the ministry you're not going to pray yourself into it now, you may pray and get it revealed to you what you're supposed to do, but you can't call yourself to be a prophet. You can't call yourself to be a pastor. Those things are ordained by the hand of God. They are the ascension gifts. They're what the Lord gave when he rose up out of the grave. But, but there's one more thing, and this is what I want to deal with tonight. I call it the spirit. The Bible calls it the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy is an atmosphere that is created by people who work worship the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy can get on anybody in this room if you are a worshiper. Isn't it amazing that the first thing that the Lord told Saul to do after he was anointed to be king, he said, you go find prophets because you need to be around people who can give you a direct word from God. He said, but you're gonna know that these are real prophets because they are praisers. They will be coming down a mountain with a, a timbrel and a harp. They'll be coming down that mountain. They'll be glorifying the Lord and you'll know these real prophets because they're not disconnected from worship. They are involved in praise. And, and he said, you connect yourself to these praisers. And, and when you do, you read what happened. He got around these prophets and they started prophesying and praising. And as they prophesied and praised, the spirit that was on them got on him. And Saul started doing what the prophets were doing. Why? Did he become a prophet? No, he was not a prophet. But my mama told me that who you run with, that's what's going to rub off on you. 
You keep running with them negative people that's always talking about how we can't make it and how bad it is. You always going to feel like how bad it is. But you get around some of these sweet people at the Apostolic Church of Topeka that say we're on our way to heaven and we're going to crush the devil on the way. You're going to be on your way to heaven crushing the devil. You got to be a, what's coming out of people's mouth is going to affect what goes in your ear and how be it then it's going to affect what comes out of your mouth. That's why I moved you up here a little bit closer because I've watched this happen too many times. I've watched people that get around. I've watched people that said, I don't even believe in all that stuff. I've had people tell me, I don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I don't believe in apostles, prophets, evangelists. I don't believe in all that stuff. We just believe all we need is the Bible. I said, well, then you need to reread the Bible because what I'm talking about is in the Bible. Now, hear me. Because this is where we're going to get into this. Because I'm talking about the spirit of prophecy that can move in this room and touch everybody in here. Now this is what you must know. This is the very key to it. When you see God beginning to bless a person, it's not because he loves them more than he loves you. Talk to me just a little bit. I'm going to show you something. Whenever you see God is filling up a church and giving a church revival, it's not because he said, no, not you, not you, not you, no, 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 uh, I'm gonna take you. God is not impartial. He's not a respecter of persons. When you see God blessing a family or blessing a man, it's not because he don't like you and he likes them. It's not because he loves some people more than he loves other people. It's not because he loves some ministries more than he loves other ministries. Let me lay it on you truthfully. The fact is that it's some people who love God more than other people love God. It's not that he is favoring them, but they are doing things for God that other people are not doing for him. And whenever you learn what God likes and you learn the principles of God, when you figure that thing out, when you learn, when you see somebody blessed, it's simply because they have figured out how God operates. And I'm gonna show you how God operates. I'm gonna tell you what God wants. Would you like to know what God wants out of you? I'll tell you right now. What God wants in this hour is people who will give him spontaneous, unprovoked praise. What God wants in this hour, what he wants from you and me right now is people who will come to him and pray and, and spend, give him attention without having be told, be here at seven and give me attention. I'm gonna show you how to get, if you wanna stay where you're at, then you only talk to God when you've been told. But this is what God is not into. And if you notice my preaching, I don't beg people to praise God because God is sick and tired of people that can only clap when they've been told everybody clap. You are not doing it from your heart. You're doing what a man told you to do. I'm not your mediator. If you can only give God praise and glory whenever I say, come on, everybody, praise God. Come on, everybody, give the Lord glory. If the only time you can do it is when you've been stimulated, then all you're doing is responding to stimulation. But what the Lord wants out of us and what God blesses is people who do not have to be told that right now is a good time that I sent something, I'm gonna praise God. God's looking for people that don't have to be told to stand up. God's looking for people that don't have to be told clap. God's looking for people that say, I feel in my spirit and I'm led by the spirit into praise, into prayer, into fellowship. It's called, if you go out here and holler in the Grand Canyon and tell the Grand Canyon, I love you. It'll say, I love you, I love you, I love you back. But that ain't the Grand Canyon. That's just you getting out what you put in. That's nothing but an echo. And if I tell you, if he tells you, everybody say praise the Lord. Ain't nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong, but that's just an echo. That is not a real praise. Right. And what God is trying to get us back to is a spontaneous church where at any moment, at any second, somebody can do what you're doing now. 
where you don't have to tell people, please stand, please worship, please wave a hand. No, what God is looking for is people who will come loving him, who will worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what he wants. Any, any husband that's got a wife that has to, has to say, tell me you love me. Don't you love me? Well, then tell me. I love you, baby. He, 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 he's on the outside looking in. He don't get it. Any, any man who's got a wife that only can serve him because, you know, she's putting, he's putting whatever, Prada on her feet and, and, and whatever, you know, on her back. She's wearing Louis and all that, and nothing wrong with that. My wife's got it. What I'm saying is, is that if she's only living for me, uh, with me, and around me for that, I don't really have a wife. I got somebody that I hired on to be a wife. I'm gonna wake y'all up. Okay, I'm gonna preach like I'm in Louisiana. That's just a paid prostitute. And what God is looking for is people that don't just serve him because of what he does for them. He's looking for people that said, I like your company, God. And when I come to church or when I get in my car or go to my house, I want to be close to you. You're not buying my love. But I'm, I love your presence more than I love your presence. Oh, yeah. Now, listen to me. Because, because here is how most people praise him. Most people that would praise God 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and most of us praise God in that 60 or 30-fold realm, and that is this. If God does something for you, I, I, you're sweet enough, people. If God does something for you, you would give him praise. Would you not? I bet this church would do it. I bet you that if the Lord healed your body and you knew you got healed, you'd be ready to put a hand up and say, thank you, Jesus. There's people here that get a new job. You're going to come in here clapping, dancing, running. We can't slow you down because God done something and you know about giving thanks. Is this the church that knows how to give? Because God works with thankful people, folks. You hear me? Because that's 30-fold living. Because, because most anybody will praise God with a physical, tangible evidence that I've seen him perform something. So I'm praising him for his marvelous acts. I'm praising him for his wondrous work. He done something, and because God done something, he deserves me to be praised. Let me just butt in on myself and tell you. He deserves to be praised whether he done something for you or not. Because we know about that kind of praise. We know about that kind of relationship. And I'm talking about praise, but I'm really not talking about praise. I'm talking about a relationship with the Lord. And that has to do with this. Most of you are shaking your head because you've got enough good sense and, 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 and decency to know you thank God for anything he's done. And that's how majority of people give God praise. That's how the sports world does it. Your team scores a touchdown. They jump up and they holler because of their team put points on the board. Kansas City, Jayhawks, get on the board. Y'all go holler and scream and cut up in your living room and, and throw it because you're winning. And, and that's fine, nothing wrong with that. You get healed of cancer, your cancer's in remission, now you got something to praise about. Understand that, get a touchdown, good. You, you get your bills paid off and you don't have a mortgage anymore, now you're debt free, you burn the note and you do all that. It's a response to something that has already happened. Now I'm gonna bring you there now. I got you, I'm gonna take you right now. Somebody just got what I'm fixing to say, but I'm gonna show you how prophetic people operate. I'm gonna show you how to think like a prophet, how to think like prophecy, how to move under the gifts of the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of prophecy. Because there's another group of praisers that they don't operate like that. They don't operate based on what has happened. No, no, no. I call these people, I hope that you're some of you are here tonight. I call these people a greater level of praisers. I call them prophetic praisers. The, these prophetic praisers, uh, they, it's ridiculous how they operate. They'll release praise to God before the answer ever shows up. 
elbow your neighbor and don't break the rib. Just say, listen, say, you're about to hear something that's going to change us. This is going to change you. Tell them, say, it changed Saul. It'll change you too. Listen to me. Here it is. Prophetic praisers begin to give God glory for a healing while they're still sick. Now see, pathetic praisers, not prophetic, but pathetic praisers wait until they get healed and then they say, God, when you do something, I'm gonna do something. But prophetic praisers begin to praise God for a financial miracle when they still got a financial mess. You get what I'm saying? Prophetic praisers begin to praise God when they're still in trouble. They start praising him like they're out of trouble even though the circumstances said no praise here. But they say, but I'm not looking here. I'm looking up the road. Let me see if I can dig some of y'all out. Prophetic praisers climb over all obstacles and they begin to worship Jesus over the outcome before the end comes. Rewind, let me run this back. Prophetic praisers, somebody say, that's me right there. Prophetic praisers begin to give Jesus praise for what he's gonna do before he even does it. That's faith. What the Lord sent me by to tell somebody tonight is don't wait to the last lap. Don't wait till you get a bunch of evidence. Don't wait till I heal it, fix it, or get you out of it. The Lord said tell some people at Topeka tonight that they need to go ahead and shout before the battle's over. Tell them to shout now. What's the song say? Don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. You'll scare the devil to death. I wish I had somebody that would get what I'm saying right now. You're gonna have to dance in advance. Don't wait till your kids get the Holy Ghost. You gotta start praising the Lord for your kids getting the Holy Ghost before they even speak into, they're still cussing, but I'm praising God because I see them baptized and in the water. That's how you entertain the spirit of prophecy. You can stir the spirit of prophecy up by talking about what Jesus is going to do before he's even done it. You can start praising him in advance and your praise becomes your prophecy. This leprous man never tells the Lord. See, let me help y'all with one thing. This is, this is, y'all don't need this. This is somebody else needs it. I'm just gonna give it to you so you can tell them whoever they are because it wouldn't be anybody in here. But see, you think, or excuse me, they think that if they can complain and make it sound bad enough that the Lord will feel sorry for them and answer based on how bad you made your prayer request sound. But this leper never come and said, I messed up, I'm missing fingers, I'm missing that. He didn't talk about it. Because listen to me, folks, God does not answer prayer based on the need. He answers prayer based on your faith. That man never asked Jesus to heal him. He walks up and says, I worship you. I magnify you, Jesus. He started telling Jesus who he was. When you worship, you go into a place of, of, of prostrating before a person and saying, you're the healer. If you tell Jesus who he is, then he's gonna be inclined to do what you said he was. Watch this. Throw this up there, my brother, back there. Revelation 4 and 8. I got to hurry here. Revelation 4 and 8. It said, there were four beasts. This is in heaven. This is how they praise in heaven. Tell your neighbor, say, this is what heavenly praise looks like. Four beasts. Each of them had six wings about him. They were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night saying, holy, holy, holy. Watch this. Lord God Almighty, which was, tell your neighbor, say, past tense. Which was is past tense. They were praising the Lord over what he was. Nothing wrong with that unless you camp out on what he done a long time ago and you cannot notice what he's doing now. Too many churches have become museums and talk about what we used to do. Boy, we used to, used to, used to. A long time ago, we had this and had that. It don't matter what was if you don't have what is. 
because they took one more step and moved from holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, tell your neighbor, past tense, and watch this, and said, and is, tell your neighbor, present tense. It does no good if you can remember what God done and you can't recognize what God's doing. Because God has been in here since Sunday and I believe we've been very able to perceive that this is not something that God has just done, that God is doing a present tense thing and he needs present tense praise. But I'm not even preaching about those. That's 30-fold, 60-fold. But watch 100-fold. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Which was past tense? Which is present tense? Watch this, go up. He said, and is to come. They are praising the Lord for first of all, what he done. Second of all, what he's doing. But they got prophetic here and they started praising the lamb for what he was gonna do next. You know what I hear the Lord just spoke to me when we were in here in prayer. He said, I want you to ask this church, can they praise me for a hundred soul revival that they haven't seen yet? I'll wait. Some of those will be your husband, kids, wife, grandkids, daughter-in-laws, nieces, and nephews. Some of those will be your neighbors and co-workers. Some of those will be your in-laws, your outlaw. I'm telling you, God is looking for people who can praise him in advance. The prophetic is able to do that. Okay, let me give you a word. Let me see. Usually I step out here, y'all can catch it. When you get prophesied to, let's see if you can recognize a prophetic word. The devil is not, pastor, fighting this church over anything that has already happened. The devil is not mad about a revival that apostolic church at Topeka has ever had. He's not mad about anybody you have already baptized. He's not fighting you about anything that's already taken place. Now this will be shouting music if you get it because what I'm going to tell you right now is going to be a prophetic word from the Lord. The Lord told me to tell you the devil is not fighting you over what you have accomplished. He's fighting you over what God's about to do next. He's fighting you because he sees you got a future. The reason he's mad at this church is not because you had revival 10 years ago. He's worried about the next 10 years. What has that got to do with it? If the devil has enough faith in you to fight you, to fight him over what you're gonna do next, you ought to be praising the Lord over what he's gonna do. If the devil's fighting over it, you ought to be praising over it. Don't let the devil have more faith in your future than you got. The reason he's come against your home and your family and your kids, he knows that God's about to do one more thing that's going to exceed the last thing. Oh, I'm going to give you an opportunity. If the enemy's fighting this church over what's coming, you ought to be on your feet praising the Lord for what's on. I see something coming. That's pretty good teaching on Bible study night. This will change your life. This will change your world. This will help you get connected to the prophetic. This will stir up the gift of prophecy in you. And if there's a prophet among you, it will cause him to walk in here and be able to speak very plainly what the Holy Ghost is saying. But it only works through true worship. Worship is not contained and cannot be contained in the time-space continuum. Worship is eternal. You're in time. God is not in time. He is outside the bubble of time. In his mind, everything has already happened what you need to happen. 
And when you connect to him in a relationship is when you say, God, you already done it. I'm praising you in advance. God said, tell them to quit waiting on me to do something and to show me their faith with their praise. Your praise is your prophecy of what you really believe God is going to do and your silence is your prophecy of what you do not believe he is capable of pulling off. My Lord, I'm gonna buy this CD myself. I'm gonna send myself an offering in. If I could live by this and do what I'm telling you right now, it'll revolutionize your life, your prayer life. It'll change your church, your marriage, your home. You need to quit seeing your husband as he is and say, I see you a prayer warrior. Quit, seeing, quit looking down on your wife at the way she is and say, I see you in church running the aisles, set free, delivered with a joy. You gotta look ahead and praise God. Let me try one more time. I'm halfway there. Let me try one more time with Philippians 4 and 19. Here's my favorite words. You can be seated. See, that's better than please stand and praise it. You get that? There's a change happening in this church. You were great before I got here. It ain't got nothing to be being here, nothing to do with me. I'm just telling you, since Sunday, I've seen something do happen to you that God has done. But we're not having to beg you and please, would somebody please clap. That's pathetic praise, not prophetic praise. You had to be told. You so lost and have so little of the mind of God and the spirit of God, you no more know his will that you can't sense his presence and know, I think I should clap now. Let me help you one more time. Your praise is never predicated on if somebody besides you stands or not. That's why I like you. I'm going to give her my books to sell because I bet she could sell them. I bet she could sell every book I got up here. I bet she'd get every one of them books sold I got in that book sack. You want to know why? Because if you wait around and say, well, if everybody stands, I guess I'll stand. you just responding to people and God ain't going to respond to your praise because you only standing because it's, uh, it's comfortable. But when would you ever get it in your mind? God, you're talking to me and if it ain't for nobody else, I'm gonna stand up and get this word and I'm gonna clap, I'm gonna do what he does. You need to try to be first one time. You become sensitive to the Holy Ghost when you learn to praise God quickly. But my God shall supply some of all your need According, tell your neighbor there's an according. Tell your neighbor, say there's a calculation here. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. God is going to supply every need this church has. This church will never run out of money. This church will always have money to pay light bills, water bills, fill up baptistries, run buses, all this stuff. And because God has always done that for the church, he's always going to do it for you because you are the church. God is going to supply all your need according to his riches. In glory. Somebody say glory. glory. Now look at this. There's a, there's, a, there's a measurement made. There's a calculation made. He says, now I'm going to supply your need, but it's based on my glory. It's according to how much glory I get. If I got enough glory, you got enough to supply the need. When he says, according to my glory, your need gets supplied, he's not talking about Shekinah glory. He's not talking about Kabbalah. He's not talking about the glory between the cherubims on the Ark of the Covenant. He's not talking about a great light of God. He's not talking about heaven's bank account. That word glory is doxa. And doxa has to do with praise, hymns being sang, worship, prostitution, Stating yourself before the Lord, 
That word glory is what my grandmother, who was a church mother, my 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 grandfather was our pastor, and them church mothers where I come up from in the middle of a service like this, they would say, you glory. This glory that he's talking about there is not the glory that God has. This is the glory that you give him. Y'all missed it. But it's not your fault. I'm sure it's mine. Let me rewind this again. God is going to supply your need according to how much praise you give him. Because that word glory is not Shekinah. That word is doxa, and it should read like this. My God, as a matter of fact, throughout the New Testament, that word glory is doxa. It is, it is translated praise and worship and singing many times. In other words, it reads like this, Topeka. My God shall supply your needs according to how rich you make him in praise. And you can't bankrupt God on praise and expect him to feel something. Up. You need to make God rich tonight. Do you hear what I'm telling you? God said, make me rich in praise and according to how well you praise me, that's how much I'm gonna supply. But if you don't praise me, again, I want glory, God said. And when I get glory, you get needs met. Hallelujah. Here it is. I like saying this a third time. You can be seated. And that's good words. I didn't have to say that Sunday. I, I like that on Wednesday night. We're just having Bible study. Listen. When you learn that praise is precious to God because if you give God money, he gave you the money that you're giving him. Somebody said, well, I'm going to give God some time. And you should. I'm a tither, I'm a giver, I believe in all that. I'm just showing you why sometimes your giving don't work. Because he loveth the, see it's your attitude. If you're not praising, when you, if you're giving begrudgingly, say that preacher always want money, you're not going to get nothing back because your attitude is not giving glory. You're giving paper with dead presidents on it. But when you learn how to give glory, cheerfully watch this watch this it's very powerful because it's your attitude that is going to determine what dimension you're going to reap in 30 fold 60 fold ain't it amazing it should be 90 but he said it's going to jump from 90 30 60 not 90 100 I'm going to give you your tithe back because I like your attitude because you love what you're doing. And watch this. Nobody's making you give or nobody's making you praise. Nobody's having to twist your arm. You're looking for a place that you can give praise. Can I tell you something tonight? What God is looking for is people that see a need and don't have to be told to respond to it. They just say, God, I want to get a praise in. God, I want to get some giving in. I don't need to be told. God's looking for spontaneous prophetic givers and prophetic praisers. That's how God supplies need. He shall supply your need according to. Elbow your neighbor, say, make God rich. Tell him again, say, you need to make God rich. Now listen, because, let me jump to this. Let me jump. Uh, Isaiah 53 and 5. You might could quote this. I bet there's people here that when you see it, you can quote it. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes were healed. Anybody know that scripture? You have ever seen that before? That's written by a prophet named Isaiah. And you, you think you know what that means, but you don't know what that means yet. This is about Jesus dying on the cross cat of nine tails, blood, agony, everything that happened on Calvary. This is about that, but it's about more than that. Because in two minutes, you're going to know what that really means. And when you see what that really means, I won't have to tell you, and he'll never have to tell you to praise God again. When you learn what prophetic praise and prophetic giving and prophetic prayer and operating with the spirit of prophecy is about. In a minute and 30 seconds, you're going to know what that really means. Because Isaiah was a prophet that lived 700 years 
before Jesus was even born in Bethlehem, Judea. And when the prophet had the spirit of prophecy come upon him to write these words, tell your neighbor, say, in 30 seconds, we're about to get a revelation. 700 years before that happened, the prophet told you it was going to happen. But watch how he wrote it. He did not say he shall be. One day it's going to happen, but it's 700 years. No, before it even happened, the prophet said he was. Now let me come on this side over here. Before Jesus even got here, 700 years in advance, the prophet heard the Lord tell him and he said, it's already happened. He was wounded for your transgression. So the devil saying, hold on, man, don't get ahead of you. He said, no, when God tells you something's gonna happen, it's as good as done. He was bruised for our transgression. He's talking about this thing like it already took place and he's 700 years. You know what God's telling somebody? When I tell you that I'm gonna do something, you need to start by praising me for it right then. He was wounded. He was bruised. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, you're already healed. Do you hear what prophetic people do when they get a word from God? They start praying that thing and praising him like at all. I don't know who's got a promise here, but if God told you he's gonna do something, he wants you to pray like and praise like he already done it. Revival's not coming, it's already here. Your kids ain't coming, they're already here. God said, come on, you'll connect with the promise when you praise me in the prophetic. I'm going to finish right here. You can be seated. Just put your hands up to the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm setting my notes, closing my Bible. I'm done. Mm. Praise stirs up the prophetic. But you can't just relegate what you're praising God about to what you have physically seen him do. You gotta learn how to, this is why I believe in praising God when the preacher's preaching. Because when promises are being spoken and you start praising God, you can accelerate that thing. I don't have time to tell you about uh, about this thing that they done. They tried tried and they believe they did break the, the the speed of light in CERN, Switzerland, in the year 2000 because they filled up this 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 hydrogen collider with these certain kind of caseum gases and and they they shot that laser and they said three, two, one, and sent it. But the people that were receiving the light, they said the strangest thing happened. They said what? They said we saw it get here before we heard you send it. They said, we heard you say three, two, and before you said one, it got here. The light outran your voice. It got so fast because they changed the environment of light. What I'm telling you, your promise is coming, but you can slow it down if you don't have right praise and you don't have a right attitude. You can, but you can speed that thing up if you feel the atmosphere with prophetic praise. They said three, two, it's here. How did it get here? And then you said one. Because the light outrun the transmission on their radio voices. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying this. Before they call, he said, I will answer. He said, you, if you'll praise me, I'll start answering things you ain't even asked me to do yet. He said, but I'm way up here ahead of you, honey. I declare the end from the beginning. I call things that be not as though they were. If you'll start praising me for what has not happened as though it already took place, it will accelerate it. And before you ask me to do it, it'll show up at your house. 
tell your neighbor, say, this is all a fancy way of saying, quit living in the past, quit praising in the past, quit talking about the past, quit reliving the past, quit glorifying the past. If you knew how big the future was, you start praising him for people getting the Holy Ghost you ain't never seen. You start praising him for jobs and money and places. and th- You start glorifying the Lord for a harvest you ain't never laid your eyes on. I told, it's like my wife, she give me them cookies. I got my feet kicked up and she, she give me them cookies. She went to the kitchen and she's coming back. She went to put them cookies. I said, hey baby. She said, I already got it. I said, bring me some milk. She said, I already got it. She already had that milk. She already read my mind. You know, God already knows what you're going to say before you say it. That's Bible. What he needs you to be able to do is have confidence if he knows what things you have need of before you ask. That this is the word I'm giving you tonight. The God said, go ahead and tell them to ask me, to pray for it. But after they pray, tell them to quit going on and on and begging and begging. Tell them after they pray, say, now God, I'm through asking. Now I'm gonna start praising you. You need to make a switch, folks. You keep saying, God, please save them, please save them. You need to start walking through. You'll give the devil three black eyes. If you say, devil, I thank you that my kids got the Holy Ghost. He'll say, I got them on crack cocaine. Oh, no. I praise you, Lord, because my kids are going to preach the gospel. I praise you, God, because my kids are going to. You need to start glory. You've been praying about it. Now start praising about it. That's prophetic. I told this man the other night in service, I walked back to him and I said, I I put my microphone in my pocket and I said to him, I said, sir, I said, you're not going to lose anything. And I told him and his wife, I said, don't worry about nothing. The Lord said, you will not lose anything and that you are about to get the best job that you've ever had in your life. I told that man that he's in the back. Of the, of, of the church almost on the back row he's not here tonight I'm in a, this is another church he comes out of that pew comes out of those chairs twirl and dance out he comes he comes out he, look, he act like he already got the job the pastor walked up to me and he said hey doc he said what did you tell that man I said I told him that him and his wife are not going to lose anything and that God said he's about to get the best job that he's ever had in his life. When I said that, the pastor went, glory to God. He started twirling and dancing. And running. He made a lap around the church. They run around that church and that pastor come back to me and he said, my God, he said, that man lost his job like nine months ago. He said, they are down, we say in Louisiana, they're down to the spices. They ain't got no meat left. They down to the salt and pepper. They down to the, I mean, they got nothing left but the herbs to put on the chicken and ain't no chicken. He said, they fix it to come get everything they got. He said, if anybody needs to hear that, he said, it's them. I said, well, it's done. I said, it's done because he believed it the minute he heard the word. This is what we do. Now, y'all love me, don't you? You got to love me a little bit. You know, I'm preaching to myself. But what you got to snap out of doing is God tells you something and you say, well, when he does it, I'll praise him for that. You do it, and then I'm going to give you praise. God, you move, then I move. The minute God goes so far to make you a promise, you need to start praising him right then as though it ought. If you get a prophecy... Do you know how many times I've gone to these meetings and these people are used by God and I just sit there saying, please tell me something. They don't ever tell me nothing. I go all over this world preaching for 20 years, giving people words. I go to these conferences and they prophesy to the person on the left of me. They tell the person behind me, everybody's getting rich, everybody's gonna do this and that. And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't hear nothing. But the Lord showed me something. And Sister Vesta Mangan taught me this. She said, baby, she grabbed me one night while the Holy Ghost was moving. She said, baby, she said, do you see them people out there sitting there just doing nothing? And the Lord's moving and God's prophesying and making all these promises. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, we are going to steal their blessing. She said, we are going to do to them what Jacob did to Esau. 
because they have been told what God's gonna do, but they not praising him and they don't want it. She said, so we're gonna take their reward. She said, let's me invest the man. We're leaping and just, can I tell you a few months later, I was doing just what she did. I said, if these knuckleheads don't want it, and I've been doing it since I've been here, Bishop. i watched some of you gods talking to people all around. Hey, if they get a word and they don't want it, you say, God, I'm gonna take their word. You know why? Because God might be talking to her, but what he's telling her resonates with you. You say, I'll take the crumbs that fall. I don't need you to come pick me out, preacher. I hear the Lord talking. I'll take that for myself. I feel like telling somebody, if you don't want it, God's gonna give it to the somebody that says, I'm gonna praise you for their miracle. I'm gonna be Jacob on Esau. If you don't want this, I want the birthright. I'm done, I, I promise, stand, see it, twirl, do whatever you wanna do. But you hear, you gotta hear the end of this because this is what's gonna happen with some of y'all. Me and the pastor, after I told that man, you're not gonna lose nothing, you're gonna get the best job you ever had. He comes out spinning, twirling, dancing, shouting. That was on a Sunday, on Tuesday, me and the pastor were on his boat and his phone rings on his boat. He, he's on his cell phone. He goes, oh, my God. He, he's getting this word. He said, oh, my Lord. He said, Brother Johnson, my God, you won't believe this. He gets back on. He said, oh. He said, man, you ain't going to believe. what you he, he said, Brother Johnson, you're not going to. I said, hang up and tell me. He said, you know the man. He, the pastor got tears in his eyes. He said, man, the man, Sunday night, the man, the job. I said, yeah. He said, he went to a job interview today, this morning in Indianapolis. He said he gets to the, to the place for the interview, trying to get on the elevator, the elevator wouldn't open, and some man comes up to him and says, where are you trying to go? He said, a job and a few, uh, see certain people. He said, well, you can't ride that elevator without this security badge. He said, well, wh where'd I get that? He said, he said no, I don't know. He said, they're supposed to have you one. He said, but listen. He said, let me help you. He scanned his badge. He said, I pushed the door. It opened this time. He said, he said, good luck on your job and you want floor number four. He said, when the elevator opened up, Sister Khan, he said, I stepped off that elevator and he said, I got attacked. He said, you'd have thought I was a terrorist carrying bombs. He said, these women jumped on me and said, whoa, you don't have clearance to be up here. He said, I'm here for, they said, no, 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 you don't have a badge. You don't have, you're not supposed to be up here without a badge. You got, you, you can't be up here without clearance. And, and, and they said, you, he said, well, I'm here to get a job interview. They said, you only come over here after you've already got the job. That's me too. I just said, well, then I'm in the right place because God said. If some of y'all would talk to people the way you talk to your husband, the devil would run and hide. If you just get bold and just say, no, devil, sit down and shut up. They said, you gotta go 10 miles on the other side of Indy. He gets in his car, he's frustrated, he's very mad. He drives all the way to the other side of Indy. He said, I'm there filling out the application and my phone rings and it's the lady from the place I just left. And she said, are you the man that was just here a little while ago? Yes, got on the elevator, come up, we told you yes. She said, okay, she said, listen, I need you to come back over here. He said, lady, I just come all the way across. She said, listen, he said, but you told me to fill out an application. He said, I'm filling out that. She said, leave it, come back now. He said, I get in my car. He said, I am mad. I drive all the way back. He said, this time there's a young lady that meets me, puts a lanyard around his neck, said, here's your security badge. Said, we get on the elevator, we get up. Said, I get off the bag. He said, the lady introduced me to this lady again. Said, uh, she said, we just need to ask you a few questions. She said, how did you get on that elevator earlier? Who, who brought you up? He said, nobody, I, I rode by myself. He said, well, we want to know how you got that elevator to open because you don't have a badge and if you don't scan a badge, that elevator cannot open up. He said, well, it was a short, bald-headed man with a suit and a tie that scanned his badge and let me up. And they said, oh no. 
they said, nobody in this company would be so ignorant to scan a badge because they know you do not let visitors ride. They will be immediately terminated. She said, describe him to me. Sound like Lily, what I told you the other night. Said, 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 said short, bald-headed, white man, suit and tie. And she said, sir, we don't have no short, bald-headed man, no suit and tie. And she said, all we know is we saw you walk up to that elevator, pushing that, pushing it, and pushing it, and we saw it on the video. You got in this elevator and it worked. We want to know how it worked. He said, ma'am, all I know is, is a man showed up and scanned his badge and told me to get up off the first, fourth floor. And he said, here I am. She said, sir, she said, I don't know what to tell you. She said, but before we all get fired, she said, can we just offer you a job making X amount of money and you keep your mouth shut and don't tell anybody? He said, I got the best job I've ever had in my life. You want to know when he got that? He didn't get that job Tuesday. He got that job on Sunday night whenever the Holy Ghost said, you're about to get a job that you ain't never had. And he said, I believe it and started praising the Lord prophetically. I come by to tell somebody, God's got an angel in your Tuesday. God's got an angel in your Monday. But it's dependent on what you do on Wednesday that's going to determine what God's going to do next week. I'm gonna give you about two minutes here to figure out what you ought to be doing. God is looking for somebody that'll give prophetic praise. If you'll do what you're doing right now, this is how you stir up the spirit of prophecy. Even the prophet said, bring somebody with a minstrel and let them play. And the hand of the Lord will come on the prophet. You can't have accurate, true prophecy if you don't have accurate, true praise. But if you'll do your part, God will do his part. There ought to be some worship in here right now. I'm not talking about praising God for what he done. I said, will you praise him for a 100 soul revival? Would you praise him for the African American community that's gonna flood this church? Would you flood him for the Native American community that's gonna come in this church? Would you flood it for the Mexican and the Spanish and the Latino that's coming? Would you praise the Lord in advance? Would you give him prophetic praise? That's how you stir it up. That's how you stir it up. That's how you stir it up. Just before you step out in that aisle step, I want you to look at somebody while you're praising and tell them, you have never praised Jesus until you didn't feel like it and you done it anyway. Then go ahead and do what you're doing. Tell them, say, you haven't never praised him until you couldn't perceive him, but you praised him anyway. That's when you're really praising God. That's when you're not responding to emotions. You're moving by faith. You're moving by what you know. And try to bring nobody with you. Just break out where you are and come as close as you can down here to the front and let God know, Lord, I'm gonna stand here and praise you for a moment. I'm gonna praise you for not just what you've done, not what you're even doing right now, but God, I'm gonna give you glory for who you're gonna be in my family, who you're gonna be in this church. God, I'm gonna praise you in advance for what you're gonna do next. 
I am praising you for what was, what is, and what is to come. And I'm doing it like the prophet did. I'm doing it as though it already happened. He was, and it ain't even happened yet. He was bruised, and ain't even been a lick laid on him yet. He was, he was, it is, you're all ready. Jesus. <laughs> I feel the Lord in this house. I'd praise him even if I didn't. You would praise him and if you did, but I do sense the Lord in here confirming the word of his servant that what you're doing right now is you're touching me now for what I'm gonna do later. You're believing me now for what's coming in the future. There's a transition that's happening with you, sir. Transition. God's transitioning you. You're about to transition into something that's going to radically change everything. With you and all these people I see lined up going to follow behind where you go. There's a transition going to happen. And what God is about to do with you is let you step into something that's going to fulfill and fill every void in your heart. Can you slip your hands up and let us pray for you? We're going to lay our hands on you, and when we lay our hands on you, something's going to pour down on you here that's going to be very powerful. Just open up your heart to the Lord right now and receive this. Open your mouth, sir, and call out to the Lord. Something pouring down on you right now. Something coming over you right there. Every void place, every empty place in your heart be filled by the Holy Ghost of God right now. In the name of Jesus. Speak that out, brother. That's the Holy Ghost. Speak that out, brother. That's the Holy Ghost. Speak that out, brother. That's the Holy Ghost. Somebody pray of the Holy Ghost right now. There you go, receive that. Receive that down in there. Woo-hoo. Come here, walk with me. I'm on. Speak over you. I'm going to tell you something in the whole. Just follow me because this is what you're doing. You're stepping up. You're coming up. And this is what God is doing for you. This is what God's going to do for you. He'll probably do it for some others if they can have this kind of faith. But your search is over. And the reason that God brought you here and put you here is because this is the place where you're going to grow. And God has had to shut doors in order to show you the open door. And nothing against nobody, and I'm just prophesying, so I don't even halfway know all what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying. The Lord has to sometimes shut doors to get you through an open door. Ain't nothing wrong with nobody. Ain't nothing wrong with no other church. Ain't nothing wrong with these people that I I see in my spirit right now. But the Lord said, if you want to prosper and grow, he said, stay where I'm planting you, and that is right here. Am I telling you the truth? If you leave here, I'm not saying you'll go to hell. I'm saying you're gonna descend back down and you're gonna go back into that place of trying to find out. But the Lord told me to tell you, if you'll stay here, the blessing's gonna find you here. You won't have to look for it. It's gonna look for you. 
In the name of Jesus, young man, I declare it over you right now where God put you that the devil shall not move you. The search is over. There it is from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. I declare it the favor, the anointing, the blessing of God that you look for, it be upon you right now. It be upon you right now. It be upon you right now. God's gonna send you people that have been to churches that they can't grow in and they can't go in. God's gonna send you people over here and the only reason you're gonna keep them is if you do what you're doing tonight because I got a word from, for you right now. They not looking for no dead church. They not looking for a Wednesday night dry, dead, something where God can't move. They're looking for this. This ain't happening because I'm here. This is happening and that's why I came because God was going to do this. But what I'm telling you, there's people like this man right here. God's going to start bringing them over here because they're not being fed. But God said, open up your hearts to me and I'll open up the gates of this city. They're coming, folks. They're coming, folks. They're coming, folks. They're coming, folks. Hungry people are coming. Hungry souls are coming. I wonder what you'd do if God sent you 10 black people. I wonder what you're going to do when God sends you 10 Latinos. I'd move over and give them my seat and say, we've been looking for you. We heard you were coming. God told, we were praising about you on a Wednesday night. We were thanking God. Can we baptize you in Jesus' name? We already got a robe. We already got a, we already ready. I want to, I want to, I want to, I forget. I'm bad with names and I never forget a face. Boy, I see the light. God, glory. Can I pray for you? Can I speak over you? Can you come right here to the middle right here, please, sir? And your sweet wife, who I know this is pastor's uh, son-in-law and daughter, right? You guys just come on. Now, I told pastor what I was going to tell you because I believe in being subject to the shepherd of the house. And, and, and I don't, and anybody that would come here, it doesn't matter how anointed or prophetic they are, if they get outside of the covering of this man of God, it doesn't matter how good they seem to be, they are out of order. And I'm going to be in order, Sister Colin. I'm going to be in order. And so before I going to speak this I told Bishop last night in the car because I wanted to run it by him because I, I prophesied to everybody else here however it comes but there, there's certain things that you had to do uh, in honor and in respect and decently in order and God has a divine order and way of doing things and I told the Lord uh, I told uh, Bishop last night in his car I said God spoke to me about you Bishop I told him what I'm going to, would you catch his hand, Sister Con? I'm just asking, you don't have to do anything, just I'm going to ask you to do it. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I told the bishop last night, he said, what did the Lord say? I said, the Lord told me he's not finished with you yet. And... The enemy has tried to zap his inspiration. I didn't tell him this part. I didn't tell him this part. I didn't tell him this part because I just tested him to see if I was going to be okay to say what I'm saying here. I didn't tell him this part, but he's going to get this part. And if I'm wrong, he can look me right in the eye and say, now you don't know what you're talking about. But the enemy has tried to zap his inspiration. Not his anointing because he's anointed. Your inspiration is not your anointing. Your inspiration is the fire in you that inspires you to preach and to press on and to pastor and do what God wants you to do. It is the flicker inside of your spirit that gives you illumination and revelation and a desire and a will to move on. 
but the enemy has tried to come in on this man and this lady and this lady has had to be strong for this man because what God has spoke to me about doing is that he is about to put his inspiration back because it's been a time and a test and a season. And this is what the Lord told me, Sister Khan. The Lord said, because they have been faithful, even when they couldn't perceive me or feel me or sense me and said, God, where have you gone? Are you finished with us? The Lord said, you repeat it back to them so that they know I heard what they prayed when they said, God, are you done? Do you want us just to go on? Why can't we feel you? And why does it feel like that we're drying up? And the Lord said, because I let the heads down for a little while and let the enemy come in because he said, if you let me get to Mike Con, I will drive him out of Topeka, Kansas. But the Lord told me to tell you that you are to stay in Topeka, Kansas because the revival that he promised you is still in this city. I would not usually do it, but I'm just gonna touch the bishop here and pray anyway. I want you to stretch your hand towards this man of God right now. There's something coming back in him. There's coming something back inside of him. There's an inspiration. The glory of God's gonna come back on this church. The Lord's not finished with you yet, bishop. It's gonna return. The waters are gonna flow again. The waters are gonna flow again. The waters are gonna flow again. My God, come on, I want about five men to run over there and put your hand on his back. About five men, run over there and put your hand on his back. I want about five men to run over here praying in the Holy Ghost right now and let the bishop know we're with you, bishop. We're gonna press through this. The Lord's not done. Come on, I want some ladies to just reach up in here right now. Come on, God's doing something in the bishop right now. God's doing something in the bishop right now. I want every lady, just stretch your hands up here towards them right now. Just pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Just pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. I'm fixing a switch right here, but I'm gonna tell this church for these next few months, you need to be holding this man of God and lady up because God's about to move them to a level. The devil tried to take them down a notch. The Lord told me, hear this, Sister Khan. The Lord told me that you guys are going to finish stronger than you started. And that He is going to restore your influence. He told me to tell you that especially. Your influence is coming back. Some of you ladies just put your hand on Sister Khan right here. Something's moving on this lady right now. She's been through a season where she's had to be very strong when she felt very weak. But the Lord is just moving on this lady tonight to tell her her prayers have dug her family out of this thing. The spirit of restoration and revival is back on this family. Sister Khan, everything that's tried to come into your body and tried to zap your strength is like a spiritual fatigue has been coming upon you and it just feels like you're exasperated. The Lord said the winds are coming back in your sails, lady. The winds of the Spirit of God are coming back in your sails. 
and he's gonna put strength back in your spiritual lungs. For as it was with Ezekiel's boneyard, these bones are not dead, they have only been dry. But the Lord said, I am gonna begin to bring it back and put things back together. And the Lord said, scattered dreams that I promise you will be fulfilled, saith the Lord. Just reach in there and just pray over Sister Khan. Some of you ladies, just reach in there and pray and over her. I feel the Holy Ghost speaking this tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost speaking this tonight. Prophetically, that this thing that's trying to take her strength and zap her, that that season's over, winds are coming into her sails, that there's coming breath into those bones, that they are dry but not dead, and that these bones are gonna live again. He's bringing influence back. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is back in is moving back among them again in the name of Jesus. We're just going to press in and believe it right now. pray for this man, this sweet lady right here. I'm going to pray for them. She gave me a great testimony last night that Jesus touched her body and healed her. She was suffering with some conditions and the Lord the other night when he started healing, there's many people been healed and the Lord healed her. These are confirmations to let you know that God is with this church. And I'm going to pray over you, brother. I'm going to pray over you. I love your spirit. I appreciate you. I want to tell you what the Lord told me, and I told him. The Lord said that the mantle that's on him from this church will one day fall upon you, and it will never touch the ground, and it will go from this level even to a greater level. But the Lord said time is not just yet. And the Lord told me to tell you this, that there's going to be some things that are going to approach you that are going to come against you and going to make you almost feel discouraged but the Lord said remember this night and do not be discouraged for in the right time and the right season the Lord is going to move that mantle and when that mantle comes upon you what this church has already seen at hundredfold God is going to double it and triple it and pour it out it is going to move to a greater level but there's a foundation that's being rebuilt in Topeka and God is using this man of God to redig the old wells and to heal some things that have to be set in place. But God said, after these things are set in order, whenever you take the helm of the ship, I have one word for you. The Lord said, all you have to do is trust him and operate in love. The Lord said, if you will love these people, the Lord said, it's not by your performance. It won't be by what you can do in the pulpit. It won't be by your strategies and all of your abilities and you're very gifted and talented. But the Lord told me to tell you, love these people love the least of them and love the greatest of them but the Lord said love them and the Lord said if you will wrap your arms around these people and love these people he said for every time that you will love them and you will have compassion he said he will love you and he will favor you like he did Joseph and there will be a coat of many colors that will come over your ministry and that will be that multicultural church that's going to come to this city I just just slip up your hands, brother, right there. It's moving on you right here. Just remember these words. God said in the months and the year to come, do not be discouraged. Stay put. Stand still. For the Lord said at the right time, I will fulfill it. I will do it. I just pray it right now. In the Rebbe Shekatehi A chosen vessel, an anointed vessel. A favored vessel from the Lord. Hallelujah. You operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Operate in love and see what the Lord will do. Lord will do. 
Sherelele bahata hara bahata haya. Ikoloro hosoto rabahata hala la haya. The Lord touched her and healed her body. But there's some other attacks that would like to come against this body. There's some other things that would like to present themselves. But the Lord said, remember, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord that healeth thee. No disease shall be able to flourish in your body. No disease can live here. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What are we doing? We're prophetically praising God over the promises. We're getting ready to go home. Bishop's getting ready to come get us out of here and pull my coattail and all this stuff. You hear me? The Lord loves his church. He loves every one of you. And he wants to raise some people up. My brother back here, standing here, right back here, look at me. The Lord has a work for you to do. The Lord has a thing for you to do. The Lord said, rededicate and stabilize yourself. The Lord said, if you will become steady and foundational, the ministry that the Lord has called you to will begin to present itself and open up. The Lord said to tell you these words, tell him to be faithful to me and I will be faithful back unto him. The Lord said, steady yourself and prove yourself to these people and I'll put my word in your mouth and I'll put my word in your hand and you shall deliver it but you must be faithful, saith the Lord. Come on, let's thank the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.